Lesson 4.3, working with rational exponents. So when we talk about a rational exponent, we're talking about an exponent that is a rational number. That means a fraction, right? So you should be pretty familiar with working with fractions by the time you get to grade 11, although I'm sure some of you still have some major issues with them because they don't seem to be taught so well in previous grades anymore. So we've already talked about this one here. This remember is the index number. This is the radicand and this is the rational or the radical sign. So whatever number is in front here, that's a denominator of a fraction. So b, the nth root of b would be b to the 1 over n. So normally there, well, for most of the part that you've been working with, there wasn't a number here. And that magic number that was actually there was a 2. So anytime you took the square root of, of a number, you were actually taking the number to the half power. When we have something like this, however, the nth root of b to the m, that's the same thing as me writing b. This is my denominator. And the m becomes my numerator. And I'm going to show that in a minute here why it works that way. So this is your nth root. So the nth root of the number raised to the power. So m over n. And similarly, this one here, the nth root of b, to the power of m is exactly the same. It's b to the m over n. So it gives you a couple of different options on how you solve. And that happens a lot with these rational exponents. There's a number of different ways, including using a calculator for some of them. Unless, of course, your teacher asks you to give your answer in fraction form and you don't have a calculator that will switch your solution back to a fraction, then you're in trouble. So you need to understand this process. So let's take a look at this one here. So the cube root of 8 squared, if you think about that, that's like having 8 squared to the one third power. And when you have power to a power, you simply multiply. So that's 8 to the 2 thirds. Now I could have also solved this a second way, and that would have been like this, and I'll just put a little or. You can write it as the cube root of 8 squared, which is 64. And either answer, if I worked with this one here, I'd say, what is the cube root of 8? You'd say 2, then squared, and you would get 4. And the cube root of 64 is also 4. 4 times 4 times 4 gives you 64. So looking at this one here, if I rewrote this, you'd say, well, that's the same thing as 8 to the 1 third and then squared. So you can see these two are really the same thing. I'm doing multiplying 2 by a third or a third by 2, which as you know means the very same thing. So 8 to the 2 thirds. So the cube root of 8 is 2, 2 squared is 4. You get the same answer. Now the other option, if you had done it the other way, I could have said what's the cube root of 8? And you'd say the cube root of 8 is 2 squared, which is also 4. So the same work, um, you should recognize that you have options when you're trying to solve these. Sometimes it's much easier to take the cube root of 8 and square it than to know what the cube root of 64 is. And this would show up when you have even larger numbers. So this one here, I have 81 to the 3 quarters. So if I asked you to write that, as a rational with a radical here. So you'd say, oh, that's the fourth root of 81. And I could put the cube here, or I could put the cube outside. Now, obviously, 81 cubed and then the fourth root is much more work than saying the fourth root of 81 and then cubing it. So I wouldn't even do this, but you, sometimes you're asked to convert between the two. So this is the, I, I'm going to write out in words and then I'll do the math. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. You should know the threes, two threes and fours well. The fourth root of 81 is 3. 3 cubed 
is 27. So that would be your answer for that. Now this one I've put a little asterisk beside it with a long description here. And that is because when you take, you can find the odd root of a negative number, but not an even root of a negative number. So in other words, if I have um, 3 here, the odd root of this, this being an odd number, that's why I'm seeing an odd root. So 3, 5, 7, the fifth root, the seventh root, the third root. So the cube root of minus 27 is minus 3, right? Because minus 3 times minus 3 is positive 9 times minus 3 is negative 27. So the third root of minus 27 would be minus 3 now to the power of 4. And 3 to the power of 4, what's 3 to the power of 4? 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. We just did that up here. Right? So this would be 81 for your answer. Okay, so let's look at these little ones here just for practice. So I have negative 27 and I'm taking an odd root. So the cube root of minus 27 is minus 3, then to the power of 1, that's still minus 3, and the negative sign, if you did yesterday's lesson and figured it out, the negative means 1 over that. So let's go back again. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3, to the power of 1 is still negative 3, and 1 over it would be minus 1 third. Remember that this negative, this negative here, if you remember that that means 1 over, 1 over your answer, then you won't make the mistake of making something like changing the sign of your answer. It's not a sign difference. It means 1 over. Okay, so the square root, or the, the square root of negative 16, your answer is no solution. You can't take an even root of a negative number. However, this one, because the negative sign is out front, this was inside the bracket. So this says, I want the square root of 16 and then times negative 1. So that would be your minus 4 answer. Some of the homework assignments um, use rational, uh, sorry, decimal numbers for the exponents. And you should recognize that 0.75 can be written as 3 quarters. So this is the same thing as 16 to the minus 3 quarters. Now, if I want to do this, I would say, what is the fourth root of 16? And that's 2. So you should know these like 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So this is the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So if you know the roots, I'm sorry, I went off the page on you here. So if you know these numbers, you should be able to figure out the fourth root. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Fourth root of 16. These are 2's. 2 to the power of 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, etc. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. And the negative, 1 over it. Okay, now I'm also going to show you just quickly on a graphing calculator how, or you can do this on your own calculators as well, how to find a root. So let's say I wanted to do, um, let's say I want to do this question right here because it has negatives and everything in it. So in my calculator I need to use brackets. If you don't use brackets you won't get the, well you would still get the right answer because it's to the power 4 for this one, but if it was to the power 5 afterwards you would get an, a positive answer if you didn't use the brackets properly. So I'm going to put bracket negative 27. Now make sure that you use a negative button if you're using a graphing calculator. So negative 27 and then on my calculator I have this. So on your calculator you might have this symbol or you might have y to the x or maybe it says x to the y on your calculator. So that raises it to the power of and now you're going to enter the fraction which is 4 thirds here. But you want to enter it carefully in brackets or divided by 3, like that, and then hit the enter, and I got 81. So the reason I'm saying that you have to make sure that you put it in brackets is because 
it will do minus 27 to the fourth power and then divide by three unless your calculator like some of them do it and some of them don't but you need brackets always use brackets makes your answer easy okay so let's do some of the harder homework questions um, to give you a little heads up and some of them are right from your textbook so that you can uh, you can check your answers from your homework okay so here I have a mix of things I have a rational exponent and I have a radical sign and I have a rational exponent down here now I take a look at these and recognize that all of the bases are the same they're all eight so I'm not going to try to take the sixth root of eight because if you did that on a calculator eight to the power of one divided by six oops I didn't put it in brackets eight to the power of one divided by six Look at what I get. 1.4142135622. No, don't want to do that. I want to simplify this. And I think the question actually asks you to write it as a single um, single power. So let's write this out. I have 8 to the 5 sixths. And I'm multiplying by 8 to the power of 1 half. So this is where you need to convert your radical. The number, there's no number here. So that means it's the square root. And in the denominator, I have 8 to the 5 thirds. So now it's fraction work, right? Because I need to do 8 to the 5, 6 plus a half. So I need a common denominator. 5 to the 6 plus 3, 6. Divided by 8 to the 5 thirds. I'm going to bring it over here. So that gives me 8 to the power of 8 over 6. 5 plus 3 same denominator, divided by 8, and I'm going to write this as 6. So 5 thirds is 10 over 6. That's a 10. And finally, I'm going to subtract. Subtract these exponents because I'm dividing. So it gives me 8 to the 8 minus 10 is minus 2 over 6. You should reduce your fraction. That's 8 to the minus 1 third. Now, sometimes teacher might ask you to give your answer with positive exponents. So if you want a positive exponent, then you would write this. 1 over 8 to the 1 third. Or you could write that even. 1 over the cube root of 8. Right? 1 over the cube root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is 2, and you would get a half. Or if you did it from here, you could say the cube root of 8 is 2, to the power of 1 is 2, and 1 over it gives you a half as well. Okay, let's go on to some more difficult ones. This is 5D from page 229. And again, I have a mix of fraction and decimal. So I'm going to write this out as a fraction and this one also as a fraction three quarters note that the number is negative not the exponent okay that's one of the biggest mistakes that students make with this kind of work they want to they want to throw negatives around your job is more to get rid of negatives okay so 128 the seventh root of 128 because it's a seventh root you have to think it's got to be something really small because if you're doing some number to the power of 7, it must be really little. And of course it is. It's a 2. The 7th root of 128 is 2. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. And then I say 1 over it. 1 over 32. The 4th root of 16 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. And then... Now you're going to need to do some crazy math here because I don't know what this number is. Mm -mm -mm. 8. I wanted it with a base of 32. So I have 1 over 32 minus, what's that, 16, 256? 256 over 32. 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1, 24, 25. Okay, so 1 over 32 minus 256 over 32 would be minus 255 over 32. Nice fraction number, isn't it? Okay, let's take a look at this one here. This is a, oh, no, we'll go over here. 
Are on the page, can you see me? Yes. Okay. So again, I have a mix of decimals and fractions. I don't like that. So I'm going to write it all out first of all, which you probably could have done some of the work while you did this, or maybe you could do it all just the way it was. But my preference is always to get things with the same format. So 16 to the 3 halves. So I want the square root, always start with the base of your rational exponent. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 cubed is 64. 4 times 4 is 16. You're going to need to know those ones, right? And 16, the square root of 16 is 4 and 1 over it. That's 1 quarter. And I have an 8 here. That's easy. We'll work for that one. And the cube root of 27 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Now note that I didn't do anything with this negative. I just left it there. Because it's not in brackets, so I just want the cube root of 27, 3, 3 squared, 9, and it's minus. So now I have 8 minus, 9 is minus 1, 64, that's 63 and 1 quarter. Okay, and the last one I'm going to do here, and then you should go and do some practice on your own. But at least you've got a few from the homework assignment that might help you out. Write as a single power. So I've got all eights again here. It's kind of like this question that was up here. Right? So I'm going to write it as a single power. That means I'm multiplying and the bases are the same. So that means I'm going to add the exponents here. So minus 2 plus 2.5. And in the denominator, I have power to a power. Power to a power means multiply, right? Multiply. So I have 8 to the 6 times minus 0 0.25. So if you need to do that on a calculator, you might want to, let me see, 6F. I don't want to put the wrong number here. Uh, minus 1.5. Minus 1.5. Okay, you can always do it on a calculator. Let's double check. 6 times minus 0.25. Minus 1.5. Okay, I was right. Okay, so minus 2 plus 2.5. That's just 2.5. Oh, sorry. It's 0.5. Right? Minus 2 plus 2.5 is 0.5. And I'm subtracting this one. So minus minus 1.5, that means add. 0.5 plus 1.5 is to the power of 2. And 8 squared is 64. And there you go. Okay, so again, don't be shy about using a graphing calculator or a basic calculator. You don't need a fancy one. And use this to find your roots. So remember, if I wanted to do, let's say, 16 to the minus three quarters. So I could do 16 to the power bracket minus three divided by four, close the bracket, enter, 0.125. Oh, so that's when I was saying, now what are you going to do with this? If the teacher wants your answer in fractions, maybe you have a converter on your calculator, but you should know that that would be one eighth. So the fourth root is 16 is two, two cubed is eight, negative means one over it. Bam, you're done. Okay, hope that helps you. Good luck with your studies. Make sure you do your homework. I commend you for being here and listening to the whole video and, and learning. Um, it'll take you places. Math is awesome. And good luck with your homework. Bye.